morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community. And The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 437 six. Six. Six, of the, six of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cry Her Media Network. Yeah. Today, recording day is Tuesday, July 30th, 2024, and it is going to be a nice day here at the Beaver Lodge, uh, potentially quite hot. I'm your host, the Eager Beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corbin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Uh, we have... Um, I'm not sure what kind of show we're going to have for you today because I'm not feeling my best. But uh, Mr. Grizzly, how's your mental health doing today, sir? Well, sir, my mental health, I think, is pretty good. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I've felt better. <laughs> my stomach yeah. off a little bit this morning. I don't know why, it just is. Uh, but yeah, mental health, I think, is good. I'm just, yeah. Uh, I, could, I could go with a, a, a settled stomach, so I'm having a... a cup of tea this morning which will hopefully help uh, here. water lemon ginger mm, mm. honey <clears throat> as per recommendations of some people said that would help but yeah yeah Ginger's i spent i spent the whole night up oh really i've been feeling like well i i must have slept at some point but i i started feeling this at around uh, one o'clock yesterday afternoon just a little upset but nothing was really happening and then I got time to go to bed and, um, well, let's just say, say things happened and messes were made. So I've been up all night pretty much. And, uh, I'm, uh, um, not feeling, I don't know how long it's supposed to take for things to start feeling better, but I'm having started feeling better and feeling worse. So, um, I have a, I'm low energy and not my usual beavery self. So uh, please uh, accept my apologies uh, for uh, being a little more subdued. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to get through uh, the show without having to uh, run to the bathroom. <laughs> Good to know. Uh, I've, I think I've spent easily about three hours in the bathroom since midnight. <laughs> so it's been a, yeah, a weird day so far. All right. Um, in the news, uh, there is a lot going on. Uh, of course, um, we can start with the Olympics. Uh, we've had our first multiple medal day, which was uh, very cool. And uh, we also have our first uh, multiple medalist as well, and our first gold medals. So uh, the day started off yesterday uh, with a bronze medal in uh, the pool, uh, from the 10 meter synchronized uh, diving platform. Uh, but then the day uh, got better because at uh, the judo competitions, uh, Canada, I think it was, won its 
eight, eighth medal total in judo since the Olympic competitions started, but the first one ever. In gold. And uh, that's gold. Uh, and that was uh, Jess, Jessica Deguchi, who is a current world champion. Um, and uh, I watched, um, I, I know I have watched judo before because I remember watching Nicholas Gill's uh, bronze medal match way back mm. when, uh, but I hadn't watched it in a while. Holy crap, judo's fun. <laughs> it's really a lot of fun. It's, uh, it's, it's, like, it's not, uh, you know, people think martial arts and they think kicking and punching and karate chopping and that sort of thing, but it's not. Judo is like a wrestling sort yes, of it, it, it's art. Grap yeah, grappling and holds and flips and floor work and stuff. And, and I don't understand all the rules, but it's like it's a four-minute period. Mm -hmm. If you get something called an epon, which I'm guessing is a pin, you win automatically. And then there are a whole yes. bunch of other takedown moves for which you get points. But if there are no points like this, you go to something that's called golden score. And that's like overtime in hockey and whatnot, overtime, whatnot. And it just yeah. goes until either someone scores a point or gets three yellow cards, which is a disqualification. And you can get yellow cards for not being combative. So for being passive or just being dead weight or running away or mm -hmm. uh, not initiating attacks. Um, so, uh, the Canadians had, uh, there were two Canadians. There was, it was Jessica Deguchi and her, her semifinal was against a, a French woman and, uh, it was brutal. Yeah, it was. It, I it, watched it. It was really brutal. So it's like, it, it got to the point where the matches last so long is that they had the energy to do a takedown, but not then to flip because yeah. it was much, and they were tired. <clears throat> But uh, that was one heck of a match. And then uh, we got to the, the gold medal match, which also, I think, went to golden score. Uh, and uh, she, um, she won both of them by uh, getting the other, uh, her component, her, her two opponents in those matches uh, to get to the three yellow cards. Um, but there was another Canadian uh, yesterday, and I wish I could remember his name. His first name is uh, Arthur, and I will... Um, mangle his last name if i try to remember it <laughs> but uh he was uh, competing margeladon um competing and uh along the way he had uh the eventual gold medal winner who's also the world champion and uh their match was four minutes and it went an extra six minutes into golden score yes he gave the guy everything <laughs> he could handle lost the match and then he was in a repassage. And if he won the repassage, he got a chance to fight for bronze. And he got to that one. And I don't know what the other guy did, but he just came at him and flipped him with an epon in like in 40 seconds or less or something. And the guy was, the Canadian guy was just devastated, mm. of course. Uh, and then in the final, in that one, uh, the guy from Armenia who won, who had just who had fought 10 minutes against the, 10, against the Canadian guy, also had like about a 10 minute fight for the final. I do not know where this guy had the energy. But it was one heck of a match. So um, uh, judo, really, really interesting. Uh, and, of course, Summer McIntosh uh, took gold in the 400 IM. She had an over five-second lead over her closest competitor. Yeah, it was, it was like a hair under six seconds, which is yeah. massive That's in any race. Which is about the same lead that Leon Marshall from France had in the 400 uh, the day before, because we talked about it and I talked about it very quickly at the end. So it was really impressive. So she basically did the same thing. Uh, so two gold, uh, one bronze and a fourth place, Mary Sophie Harvey in the 200 meter freestyle. She was swimming in lane eight, which is really bad because you get all the wake going in and she's, and also not to our advantage because, um, she has a slower, first 100 and then a faster last 100 so you get caught in the wake if you have a slower first 100 uh, but she was at six six spot at the 100 meter mark and climbed up to fourth uh, shaving a lot of time off her best personal time mm -hmm. so i mean performance of her lifetime for of her lifetime um fourth place nothing to be ashamed of when you do your best mm -hmm. performance ever uh, but it's just like ah, so close so close. <laughs> um, today, uh, the triathlon event has been canceled because they had heavy rains. And uh, even though the city has invested $1.5 billion in wastewater management systems, like huge reservoir tanks for all the water to go in, um, 
when it rains, because uh, that's what happens when it rains, then the sewage system backs up and then releases into the sand. So the bacteria levels were too high. Uh, so it was canceled uh, today. Uh, they're, and they're saying that if it um, does not clear up before Friday, uh, that they're just going to cancel the swim portion and make it a duathlon, which will probably uh, not make happy uh, those triathletes for whom the swim portion is their strongest leg. Mm. Uh, it seems that for the open water swim, however, they might do it in the same basin where the canoe kayak slalom is, is happening. So that will happen. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, and then, uh, of course, um, uh, with regards to Team Canada, uh, it seems that uh, the Special Olympic Court uh, will be hearing uh, the appeal from Team Canada uh, about uh, the six-point uh, deduction uh, today. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, I think, the, I mean, we're not going to get an answer before uh, the end, I, I would assume, because they have to deliberate, that we won't get an answer before tomorrow's match against Columbia, uh, which is still um, much win. Uh, but it will happen. Um, the Canadian uh, Yeah, it's an team, absolute must win if, for them to stay relevant in the, in the yeah, tournament. Yeah, if, if they win, they do go ahead, because at that point, uh, you know, uh, it will, I, I assume that France uh, is going to defeat New Zealand, uh, which will give it six points. So it will leave Canada and Colombia tied at three, and Canada having won the match, I assume. Uh, would be the deferential to, to send them uh, uh, forward. Um, not sure, um, because they haven't uh, completed the whole investigation, not sure if uh, Canadians uh, do win that match and then get to go on, whether or not that reopens, uh, uh, allows the IOC to, the chance to consider whether or not they will revoke the gold medal from last time, because that's what everybody's afraid of, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, uh, if the, the team happens to, uh, to make it through and uh, get past uh, the roadblocks, the, uh, the IOC and FIFA put it in its way, that they'll say, okay, well, now that you've done that, uh, let's punish you in another way. Because uh, well, the timing of the dates are all such that it's after the matches are played. So uh, The hearing takes place today to, to, because they have appealed the six-point deduction. So yeah. we'll find out probably yeah. later today or tomorrow what happens. So, Yeah, and they have not appealed the coaching suspensions, however, Mm -hmm. which was a smart move and a very no, strategic move no, they because that all, yeah. the coaches did what the coaches did. Yeah. The no, coaches did what the coaches the, did and that, that, that sanction needs to stay. They're, they're just trying to revoke, yeah. uh, revoke the, the three point, uh, six point deduction because the, the players are, we are told had nothing to do with it. So. Yes. And it is also, um, uh, how do you put it? Um, uh, not a proportional punishment, uh, to other incidents of the like that have happened in the past. So it's, it, it's creating a very, very, very new precedent. Uh, so, but we'll see what happens with that, uh, for the, for the, the team. The important part, however, is to, uh, um, just go on the field and do their best and get the win and then, uh, try to focus on that and let the rest, uh, happen as it will. Um, so that's what we got for uh, the Olympics today. But uh, yesterday I was a very happy beaver in my living room getting to stand up mm. twice because they were playing our song. And yes, I am such mm. a geek that I do that when they play the old Canada, when somebody wins a gold medal at the Olympics, I actually stand up in my living room <laughs> for it. <laughs> I know nobody sees it. I know the athletes don't see it, but I do it anyway. <laughs> All right. Um, in other news, um, by-elections have been called. Uh, there are two of them that have been called. Uh, one, I believe, in uh, La Salle, uh, Emar Verdun, I believe is the name of uh, the electoral writing in Montreal. And I believe that the other one is in Manitoba. Yes, La Salle, Emar Verdun. And um, not sure which one, Elmwood Transcona. I believe, is the one in uh, Manitoba. Um, there's a little controversy uh, for La Salle et Mar Verdun because the Liberal Party uh, decided to parachute in uh, a candidate, a uh, Montreal City former, Montreal, or I'm not sure if it's current Montreal City Council or former, named uh, Laura Palestini. Uh, and uh, so that is a uh, raised a little hackles. I'm not sure if that was a wise decision on the part of the prime minister because, well, you know, 
again, the typical narrative, and it's already starting, right? Because um, they were saying from Toronto St. Paul, so if he loses this one, then he absolutely has to step down. So they're saying about these ones, again, the same thing. If he loses these ones, then he really, 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 really has to step Why? down. He's not running um, in those writings. Why should he? Like, this is stupid. This is just I stupid. I know. I know, I know, I know. Unless you live um, in his writing, you cannot vote for Prime Minister Trudeau. You can't vote for Justin Trudeau unless yes. you live in his writing, period. That's it. That's all. Yeah. So, um, but they're saying he really has to, you know, the, 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 we've got the same thing going on in the United States as we, in Canada, as we had in the United States. The media is tired of covering the old story. This, we've already covered him in a couple of, you know, a couple of elections before. It's like, we want something new, we're bored. We want some fresh, something fresh. Uh, so, you know, the, the media in Canada, like it was in the United States, is trying to orchestrate some type of mm -hmm. soft coup, trying to make it inevitable that he has to go somehow. Um, however, by him parachuting a candidate in, uh, if he does lose, that will add to the narrative. It's like, not only did he lose, but he, loseed, he lost with his chosen candidate. He really has to go now. Uh, the NDP believes that they have a crack at this, uh, and uh, they've uh, picked uh, uh, a, a quality candidate, uh, well, should give uh, the Liberals a run for their money. Uh, so yes, uh, if in that uh, ele electoral district, uh, the message uh, wants to be sent, uh, voters could, uh, and elect an NDP uh, MP there. Um, in Elma Transcona, the battle, I think, will probably be more between the conservative and the NDP candidate. And their um, Jagmeet Singh and team have picked someone named Colin Reynolds, who's a local electrician. Um, and that seat has been vacant since uh, Daniel Blakey, Blakey left federal politics to serve as special advisor to the New Democrat uh, uh, Premier Wab Canoe. So uh, it is a currently a New Democrat held seat. Um, so, yeah. And uh, let's see who it was. And uh, apparently, uh, somebody said, uh, I'm seeing here that there's one in uh, Langley Abbotsford. So I don't know if he called all three uh, by elections, but if he uh, did, um, then um, uh, the Liberals uh, named a former MP, John Aldeg, as their uh, nominee. Uh, sorry, no. The New Democrats named former federal liberal MP John Aldag uh, there to run. So uh, we'll see what uh, happens with those as well. Uh, I apologize, kids. I'm a little disjointed uh, today. It's uh, kind of hard to focus. These things do happen. <laughs> I know what it's like. I've um, not more yeah. than once. Many, many uh, times I've been there. Yes. So it seems that uh, the by-election is uh, scheduled for September 16th. Uh, I will have more precisions uh, for you uh, in the coming days, Kits and Cubs, if I happen to get some of those facts wrong, as you know, um, we issue gentle corrections on ourselves. Uh, so um, I, I will monitor that uh, to be sure that we get the, that the information is 100% and uh, totally uh, confirmed because right now I'm not clear on if it was to, because I originally I heard it was two, and what I'm reading here seems to indicate other things. And they're also talking about uh, someone uh, named um, uh, uh, a former mayor of uh, La Marche named Lise Garon who's hitting the hustings in Jean-Pierre, Quebec. So I don't know if there's something there going on as well. Um, but I'm not uh, totally up on it yet at the moment. I used to go to school in Jean-Pierre. Uh, I used to go to school pardon? in Jean-Pierre. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? I graduated. Oh, it used to be called uh, Alvida, and then there was a small, small Jonquier, and then they merged them, and now they just call it Jonquier. They no longer call it Alvida. Or Alvida. It's gone. Okay. <laughs> it's the, uh, Alcan has a massive aluminum, aluminum plant there. It's the largest in the world, actually. And there is an entire uh -huh. bridge in that area that is made out of aluminum. Yes, yeah, it's, it's oh. the largest aluminum bridge in the world. Okay, okay. Uh, I do have some uh, additional information here uh, with regard to the appointment of Laura Palestini, according to iPolitics. Uh, it says that there were three aspiring candidates 
who, uh, quote, spent months campaigning only to be shunted aside. Um, and uh, one of those contenders, Lori Morrison, described the move as, quote, anti-democratic 100%. Um, apparently, it seems that the nomination had, was being hotly contested. Um, and there was uh, another candidate uh, which was a local marketing executive named Christopher Benninger, who said, quote, he was in shock at Trudeau's decision to forego the nomination process and handpick a candidate, saying it was not right and demotivating. Um, but uh, and then he said, I'm going to be shrewd. And when asked how he felt about it, we didn't improve our chances, he told uh, Canadian press. I'll leave it at mm -hmm. that. So uh, some uh, hurt feelings there. Um, in Elmwood, uh, Transcona, uh, Colin Reynolds, who is the NDP candidate, is a proud member of the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers. Um, it seems that iPolitics is predicting that it will be a fight um, because uh, the conservative... Uh, uh, sorry. That doesn't make sense. It's okay. <laughs> All right. What's written? I, I'm reading what's written. It just it doesn't make sense. Sorry, there must have been a, a typo somewhere. Um, late last week, liberals announced that their party would be represented on the ballot in uh, Elmwood, Transcona, by Ian McIntyre, quote, a retired teacher and union leader who has lived, worked, and volunteered in Elmwood, Transcona for over 30 years. And uh, on the ballot, New Democrat Layla Dance and Green Party representative Nick Geddert. Um, another. Oh, here's what we got about Lise Garon. Uh, another new addition to the New Democrat lineup, former La Marche Mayor Lise Garon, who will hit the hostings in Jonquière, a riding while traditionally a bloc Québécois stronghold, did elect a New Democrat, Karine Trudel, in 2015, although reverted back to the bloc Québécois in 2019. Former, uh, yes, and then, yes, uh, Liberal Aldag, as I mentioned, got the green light to run for the BC New Democrats in Langley Abbotsford this fall. So that would be a provincial by election, not a federal one. That's why I was confused. And uh, finally, Ottawa City Councillor Matthew Luloff has dropped his bid to run for the Conservatives in Ottawa Orleans after being charged with two counts of impaired driving earlier this year, with the party telling CTV News that he had resigned his candidacy on July 10th due to a, quote, personal matter. <clears throat> so that's what's going on with some of the by-elections. Yeah, yeah, personal matter be that, uh, oopsies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Uh, in a loudmouth clownvoy convoy news, uh, final arguments are being made today in court for the trial uh, trial in, about uh, what went down at Coots. Um, only two people are being tried at this point. I know that there were seven people uh, originally involved in Coots, so I don't know if they have separate trials or something. Uh, but the two that are on trial, uh, the case has been going on for seven weeks. Uh, they are accused of conspiring to murder police. Um, the prosecution has argued uh, that they wanted to start a revolution and were prepared to use violence against the RCMP in order to do it. The defense has argued that uh, the two were worrying about losing their individual rights and freedoms, and even though they were armed to the teeth, most definitely assuredly did not have any plans whatsoever to harm police. No, no. Uh, I believe one of them in the in this testimony, uh, said that uh, he had his weapons with him in case he needed to to make a break for it and run to the mountains for some reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah um, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. sure, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, also, uh, a couple of days ago, um, the closing arguments wrapped up at uh, in the Pat King convoy protest trial. Yeah, another whining because he's, he's um, in breach of his. Uh, Bail because his Soretti uh, has uh, said, "No, you're out. You're out of here." Because the yeah, his Soretti was uh, his girlfriend's mother who put her home up as collateral, collateral or or yeah, is it collateral? Or yeah. Bail bond, I guess. I'm not not collateral, but it, it's sure. Yeah, so um, yes. so uh, he broke. Uh, he he cheated on his girlfriend, and now she and her mother are like, "We're out of here." We want nothing to do with him. They're like, well, they, they kicked him out. But yeah, because he behaved as he does. And as a result, yep. he is now in breach. So he could, I think he's turning himself in today, if memory serves. 
from what I read. Probably. So yeah, he'll be doing, he'll be yeah. back in the, in the pokey for a little bit. Uh, and, and he has no one to blame, yeah. but himself. But himself, because for some reason, um, uh, radical, weird, convoy, wacko people, uh, especially the men, can't seem to keep it in their pants. Uh, Dwayne Leach, <laughs> Tamara Leach and Dwayne Leach are getting divorced because Dwayne couldn't keep it in his pants. Uh, Pat King couldn't keep it in his pants long enough to keep his ass out of jail. Uh, remember Tommy yeah. Robinson when he arrived in town? Uh, he was uh, uh, ran away to a massage parlor for a while, but not for sp- <laughs> not before allegedly getting coked up and releasing the dragon with alcohol. Um, and then if we look south of us, I mean, um, Frumpy also can't keep it in his pants. So uh, I don't know what it is with these people. Seems to be a general lack of personal discipline. You think? Maybe a little bit? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, so according to the CBC, closing arguments have wrapped up in the criminal trial for one of the leaders of what has become known the Freedom Convoy, and a decision is now expected in October. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if he's going to be there <laughs> until such time as the decision comes along, unless he can find another surety. Um Yeah. August, September, sometime in October. So he'll be there for at least wow. another two months. Pat King has pleaded not guilty to charges of mischief, intimidation, counseling, and other charges for his role in the 2022 protests, which lar- led to large swaths of the city's core being gridlocked by trucks and other vehicles for nearly three weeks. Throughout his trial in Ottawa, the Crown used evidence from social media, police, and residents to show King played a key role in bringing protest- protesters to the city and then encouraged them to stay after the authorities ordered them to leave in February 2022. Prosecutors say the Freedom Convoy as a whole was a group mischief and argue King played an active role in it, significantly impacting citizens' lawful use and enjoyment of property. Quote, this case is about Mr. King's conduct and how he chose to express his views, which he's entitled to have about the COVID-19 mandates and how that manner of expression consisted of intimidation and mischief, said Crown Prosecutor Emma Loignon Giroux during closing submissions. And this line is very, very, very important because every time these people talk, they say, I'm being persecuted for having different views. No, No, you are not. You're allowed to have all the different views you want, no matter how vile, disgusting, weird they are. It's what you do and what you say in furtherance of those views or beliefs that's where it changes. That yes. matters. Yes. So you can have all the thoughts you want. Yes. Um, and this is really funny because uh, that uh, Tracy Foran uh, person who I mentioned yesterday, who's not the CPC candidate, but want want to be CPC candidate, uh, who's just an awful, awful, disgusting oh, yeah, human being. Um, I had another run in with her yesterday. Walked to us. And, uh, yeah, on the well, she blocked me on the on the show account, and then she blocked me on my oh. personal account. But uh, y- yes, but yesterday's uh, thing was, um, you know, uh, she had said uh, something like, um, "I would say what it is I think deserves to happen to the prime minister, but it would be inappropriate to say it." So that is some very veiled violent stochastic speech uh and i pointed that out and says uh there's a big difference between thoughts and actions under the law yes you're allowed to have all the thoughts you want can't do all the actions you want but in your soul there is no difference and if you are having inappropriate if you know you are saying there are things you think the prime minister deserves to have happen to them, but they would be inappropriate to say. And that is what is in your soul. I don't care about difference between thoughts and deeds, because if that's what's in your soul, it motivates everything you say. It motivates everything you do. And some of it just cannot help but seep Mm -hmm. out. So you want to understand why it is that uh, she is just a total hot mess and awful person when interacting with everybody online. It's because in her soul, she believes that people who do not have the same political views as her deserve 
certain things to happen to them that would be inappropriate to say out loud. She's a really despicable human being. Okay. Just, just uh, despicable, so, period. Yes. I tried to end the conversation twice. I ended it with, your personal violence may vary. She continued. I tried uh, to end it uh, by indicating that I was not interested in uh, pursuing anything anymore with her. And um, at that point, she turned. Uh, she did. Uh, she decided to uh, look on my feed and pick a couple of tweets and then come back and make an accusation about me. But of course, without taking the time to screen cap the tweet to prove it. Um, and uh, that's when I pointed out to her that uh, whiplash changing the subject so quickly to move it away from your behavior to try to put the other person on the back foot is classic abuser behavior. She did not like that. Of course not. And that's what ended up getting me blocked. Because the first two tweets, I wasn't actually talking to her. I was talking mm -hmm. about her. And she chose to engage me. So I responded. And in every single one, I responded absolutely politely. And when I made the comment, she made the comment about me. So I guess I just said, I said laugh. <laughs> no. But then another tweet, I said to onlookers, so not talking to her, describing the behavior, doing the media and political literacy, social media literacy thing that I do. Yes. And uh, yeah, she didn't like that at all. Uh, so uh, I did something I've never done. I actually uh, wrote a tweet to the writing association for which she is competing for the nomination and uh, pointed out, uh, posted uh, that uh, tweet she had about uh, that lady who she was uh, chastising for having administered palliative care. Well, well, sorry, she wasn't chastising. The lady that said, hey, I administered palliative care and then said, what, do you think that makes you better than me? I said, you have a candidate here who is uh, mentally unstable, and uh, she should become your candidate, your nominee. Uh, she's going to be in the news often and bring a lot oh, of it. Uh, you might want to handle this now. And I wrote it as a um, recent member of the party who bought a membership to vote in the leadership race. Um, <laughs> see, that $10 investment turned out to be a pretty good thing. Paying off. Paying off dividends. I have so, something for you that you're going to be shocked at. I will. So, but let me finish this one. So, kids yeah, and yeah, cubs, no, uh, if you want to go, uh, and I normally never do this because it's this is not a gang up, but Tracy Foran, T R A C Y F O R A N, four, the number four, E S S, is her Twitter feed. Um, if you would like to a uh, reporter. I have reported her for harassment because I've let her know many times that I was not interested in pursuing a conversation. She kept on coming at me and then trying to attack me personally. Uh, and I've also uh, reported her for violent speech, uh, for suggesting that uh, there are things that would be inappropriate to say that should be happened to the prime minister. And if they do, he would deserve them. Um, if you would like to do that as well, uh, might be a good way to get her Twitter account suspended so she could stop harassing Canadians. And also, if you would uh, like to look up, uh, write to the Writing Association on Twitter and saying, uh, you have a problem here. Big problem. Um, it might be, uh, like I said, the best way to get involved in politics is at the writing level to make sure you want better candidates, make mm -hmm. sure that the bad candidates are weeded out as quickly as possible. She's a very, 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 very bad candidate. I have never said this aloud, and I have never done anything like this ever before. She is that bad. She, and she I'm a really political is. junkie. And, and here's the thing. It's um, the way she talks and acts and the way she responds to people and shouts them down. She's a complete narcissist to begin with. Total narcissist, which is in line with the leader of the party. But uh, party being that it is, is realizing, oh, some of these things are beginning to backfire on us. So they're backing away from some of their anger. She's ramped it up. I mean, that party is not going to put up with her for much longer because even though she, she she's not a candidate, she wants to be one, but they're going to just admonish her altogether at, at some point because the way she carries on, 
it's not how you want a political party to look. You're bullying Canadians. And that's what she is. She's a bully and can't take it. Even when you show her the truth, when you tell her the truth, you give her the facts, she still denies it. Total narcissist. Now, Here's where I'm going to drop one on you. Tavi G just sent this to me. I didn't see okay. it until a few minutes ago. And this one is, well, let's watch. For those of us in the Ottawa Valley, you'll know exactly who this is in a moment. And then we'll discuss on the other side of this 52-second video. Hi, I'm Carol Ann Meehan. You may remember me from my years of delivering the news at CJOH CTV Ottawa. Well, today I am watching the news, and like so many of you, I am worried about how Liberal government policies are hurting Canadians. They have increased the capital gains tax. They're talking about taxing the equity in our home. We're paying an expensive nope. carbon tax. They've messed up the immigration system, so it's unfair to newcomers to this country nope. and to us as well. These are just some of the reasons that I've decided to seek the Conservative nomination in Ottawa West Nepean. I want to be part of a strong Conservative team that will work towards solutions that will improve our lives. If you'd like to support me, you can do so by buying a membership to the party. Simply go to the website on the screen. I look forward to meeting you at the door. Hi, I'm Carol Ann. So, uh, she's lost the plot. Yep. Uh, the, the immigration thing, by the way, a uh, big lie, big lie, Huge immigration lie. thing is because of a few things. One massive staffing shortages Two, because, uh, because immigration is not just immigration, right? It's the whole thing, right? They, they count the, the temporary foreign workers and students and temporary you know, foreign students want all of that fits under that refugees and asylum. So when they talk about immigration, they talk about all of it, right? They use immigration as one big thing, but they don't distinguish between all the various forms of immigration that we have. Of course not. And the reason why we had massive student immigration is because uh, provincial premiers have decided for a very long time that post-secondary education shouldn't be financed through core budgetary funding. Yeah, they want uh, foreign students to do it, and that's what's happening. Yes. So uh, it's the provincial premiers that say, uh, we don't have enough people for the jobs, uh, and we need more students to keep funding the universities. So the federal government says, hey, premiers, you need that? Let's help you out. The federal government was doing what the premiers asked. Yeah, so, I mean, look, this is, this is here's a screen cap from her. Uh, as, as Tabby G just pointed, and here's the screen cap of the tweet. Doesn't the Emergencies Act give the feds power to crack down? Passed into law in 1988. It is meant for public welfare and public order emergencies that we have. Yep. She was on the police board at the time, by the way. Yep. <laughs> What a difference two years make. <laughs> so yeah, suddenly has a whole other new set of values, it would appear. Well, and speaking of Matt Luloff, a pair of city councillors calling for military aid in Ottawa protest response. City councillors Caroline Mean and Matt Luloff joined City News, the Rob Snow Show, to explain to a motion that will, they will bring to city council that would explore using the National Defense Act rather than the Federal Emergencies Act to allow the military to provide support to law enforcement working to police the occupation of Ottawa's downtown core by protest. Okay, I take that back. Then she hasn't changed her positions because that's a fucking stupid idea. Mm -hmm. We've said this on the show already. Because the whole reason they were there was to try to provoke the government into overreacting so that they would have video, fodder, and martyr narrative to take this over because they're accelerationists. They want the violence. They want the revolutionary war. So being on the police board and saying, hey, we should bring military people and military equipment here to do law enforcement, literally gift wraps those mm -hmm. people, the visuals that they wanted. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, for those of you total outside lack of, of the Ottawa Valley, judgment. for those of you outside of the Ottawa Valley, Carol Ann Meehan was, uh, the co-host of CJOH news along with Max Keeping, which for was the long time, uh, almost 30 years, almost yes. 30 years, uh, might've been 30 years actually. And, and, CJOH Evening News was the Valley's newscast. I mean, it had the largest audience by far. It generated a lot of revenue for the station because it was massive. 
Um, yeah, she's lost the plot completely. That whole, she doesn't even, under, she's not that smart. She's not. Well, no, she, she doesn't understand. If she thinks military should be brought in to do law enforcement. Mm -mm. Well, mm -mm. Let's, let's, against, I mean, a, against a bunch of people who are stochastic. She talks about. And are dying for that visual. Yeah, no. the, the, she's talking about the carbon tax and the capital gains tax. And I'm like, the capital gains tax affects 0.13% of the population. Yes. In, in any one given year. Yeah. In any one given year. Because there are some people that can be affected as on a one-time basis if they happen to have, you know. That's equity. right. And, and that capital gains tax does not apply to your principal residence. So yes. the equity you have in the home that you're living in that you want to sell, it doesn't apply to you. Yes. And then uh, the second thing where I, the first time I said no is when she said they're talking about uh, imposing, uh, like taxing the sale of your primary residence. No. 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 That's not even on Conservatives the say that every single election for the last three or four elections, it has never been true. It has never been considered. It hasn't been thought about. It is never true. It's just something they say. They, yeah. yeah. Well, they, Conservatives they, say a lot of things. They lie a lot. A lot. And just before we head out, because we are running a little bit late, I'm just going to give you this headline from, this is from two years ago, but it, it's something that you need to remember because we've talked about it before and we will talk about it again, uh, talk about it again, because this is a fact and we need to keep bringing this up. Members of controversial and secretive religious sect funded third party group behind anti-Trudeau ads. Election Canada's records suggest over a dozen individuals donated nearly $48,000 to a third party group over a time span of 48 hours. 40,000, sorry. Third party group? The Plymouth Brethren Christian Church, the PBCC, also known as the Exclusive Brethren, Brethren is a religious sect with only 50,000 members around the world, particularly in the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. In Canada, the Brethren are believed to have fewer than 10,000 members. But who is their lawyer? Oh. Right. Jerry Chipper, Gerard, Gerald Chipper, yes. the, the rumored, rumored birth father of Pierre Polyev, rumored. Yeah. Yeah. So a group of 10,000 people are trying to, run trying to take control country. over the entire country yes. to dominate 40, uh, 40 million of us. Well, and uh, now that article is from 2022 for people who are at home and weren't mm -hmm. able to see it, just so you know. But, uh, it's all out there in the open. They're doing this stuff. Well, and, and it's, it's, you know, we say a group of 10,000, but here's the thing. It's not even, there's 10,000 members in Canada. Yes. There's only about a dozen of them or half a dozen of them that are running it all. The rest are just minions in the party who in many a party in, well, in the sect, in the cult. And, and we've spoken to some who have escaped it. We've spoken to David Wallace about what they've tried to get him to do. Right. So remember this, there's a, the, the same leaders of the PBCC, the Plymouth Brethren Christian Church, are the ones who sat in the front row when Stephen Harper was sworn in as PM on their Bible. They sat there in the front row. They put him in that position, and they'll try and get Polyev there if they can. And guess what? This time, they're not going to be incremental. Oh, no. No, no, no. This is the end game. They're running the end game. This, Marcy McDonald wrote all about it. I have the book. Yeah. Yeah. It's real. It's absolutely real. Got Kit Pete here says, whatever happened with church and state rules that they should not intertwine. Oh, that was just another thing they said. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> all right. Kit some cups. Uh, that's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us and we love making this for you. Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell, please tell your peeps and poops all about us. Um, if you would like to support us, you can. Uh, by subscribing to our pod page, sponsored by the Ray Girl, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. When you click subscribe, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, uh, we will um, get something to you. you. It will come directly to you. Uh, apologies for um, being uh, there being another stop in um, uh, new material coming out uh, with the renovations. Uh, we actually had our uh, internet access cut uh, for about two days. Uh, so uh, I was not uh, able to research or listen to anything other than uh, on, um, you know, the overall network, which really eats up uh, my data. So uh, <laughs> my mobile, uh, my away from home data. So um, 
uh, yes, uh, but uh, hopefully uh, we've got that fixed now, and hopefully I'll be able to to get back to that soon enough. If you would like to, to support us in other ways, uh, make sure you go to our YouTube page, True North Eager Beaver, and uh, make like Elaine and uh, smash our buttons, like, share, and subscribe. That makes us very happy. And if you'd like to support us in other ways, uh, the QR code by Mr. Gris's head brings you to our coffee page, which is our tip jar, coffee, ko ficom slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, uh, no hyphen between them, just one full word, eager beaver. And uh, there you will find our tip jar, and we appreciate any donation that you can make. Everything goes back into the show uh, because democracy is something that you do. Um, I've got uh, the thing for you. Uh, the Twitter uh, address for the Writing Association for Tracy Ferron is at CPP underscore ESS. Um, send them a little note. If you can, uh, I no longer have access to screen caps from her since I'm blocked unless I go offline and go to Twitter and then look her up. Uh, but if you do and you see some of the things, you know, include a couple of examples. That wouldn't be a pretty, uh, that would be helpful. Uh, but uh, let them know that uh, they uh, need to clean some house and uh, do a little uh, in internal monitoring when it comes to this particular candidate. Uh, all right. It could be a tough world out there, so uh, please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, um, do you have any words of wisdom? <clears throat> well, if you're not feeling good and your tummy's are kind of rumbling, if you can get yourself a, a nice hot mug of ginger tea, that might help. Because right now, you know the like i don't know if you've heard about how they talk about gut health uh, has to do with your mental health mm -hmm. have you ever heard that before yes i have i have and it's, it's true because when your stomach is off you're not feeling good about yourself number one because physically uh, emotionally uh, and then of course you, you can't properly concentrate on work or things that you need to do and get done and achieve because you're just feeling so terrible. So your gut is related to your head. So try and get your gut quickly as fixed as possible. A nice hot mug of ginger tea, maybe with a squeeze of lemon, fix you up pretty quickly. Some honey too. Honey's good too, but that's, that's more for the throat, I think. But anyway. Yeah, probably. And just for the taste. <laughs> All right. Uh, I guess that's it for now. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, please roll the credits. I can do that if I can. Or you're the cock, I should say. <laughs> Good morning, this is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master, hot pepper sauces made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Just a little quick Easter egg kits and cubs uh, up in Jasper. Um, they're working on a re-entry plan. Uh, the municipality is going to announce it uh, relatively soon, but they're just waiting on certain conditions to be in place. Uh, so uh, if you're out there, uh, just hold tight. And uh, thank you to South Africa and again, and Mexico who have sent uh, firefighters. Uh, there are a hundred from Mexico that are, uh, should be arriving soon, and uh, we're oh, they're already in South here. Africa as well. Yeah, they've already here. Yeah, in South Mexico Africa. got here, I think, on Friday, and uh, South Africa arrived uh, yeah. yesterday, I believe. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, and I think uh, they might be ascending. Uh, I think South Africa may have sent some in two waves, actually. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, everyone. All right. I will uh, see you later.